pallet di koi si mineral ki and therefore they they, uh, they they were merged into one i was the uh, consistently thinking of forces they said it they were introduced by 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 various agencies So now we're talking about this technically when you get the dimer, trimer, or tetrahuman molecule, you get in the subject where uh, the dihumanide molecule is two humans bonded, trihumanide molecule is hide means like, uh, is three humans bonded, deca means ten humans bonded, hectahuman molecular structure is ten to the two. You know, 10 to 3, 10 to 6, 10 to the 9th is the giga human molecular structure. So mm -hmm. historically, so big we've already seen, use the, uh, uh, the A dash B, that's what he called the dimer, and this is the, the bonding formula he used here. And so we've already got here, Mirza used the, uh, he's got the AB bond, and he referred, see down here refers to ABC as trimers, right here, this is, uh, this is a groundbreaking philosophy right here. Because he, this opens up a whole philosophical whole field of study. What exactly is this? Three people bonded together, three uh, three people or three person system. This is a. So then Christopher Hada is one of them, the pro child prodigies of America. He uh, he did the same thing at age 19 when he was a professor at Princeton, and he did this uh, x plus y goes to x y. And he called he called the you could have uh, uh, the two men bond together would be the uh, this molecule the gay molecule the lesbian molecule and if we had four people bond together like a sultan who has four wives this would be the Middle Eastern polygamous molecule and this guy was cited with IQ of 225 like Goethe and he's he ended up being uh, this guy, when he was 13 years old, Christopher Rada. So this is kind of what when Biggs thinks like this, he's thinking very intelligently. So if you compare Christopher Rada here, who did this with derivation, he at uh, he was cited with, at age 16 with an IQ of 225, just like Goethe was. Then he graduated from. So he did this whole theory called, uh, at age 18, he published yeah. the physics of relationships, where he's got thermal chemical approach to relationships, the complex equilibrium of men and women, reaction kinetics, neutron scattering, and the shell model. So he, he's got the equilibrium reaction. We have a girl, boy, and XY is the paired relationship for the 600 students at, when he was a student at Cal Cal Caltech and during these years. He said consisted of N hundred total N total students, six hundred were male, two hundred were, were female, and he developed this whole thing where uh, dihumanide molecule concept when he was a professor at Princeton. But let me find this table here real fast. So I can show you here how this works. The type of dating and anything else coming to a conclusion ultimately about, it, about getting married is all of a stable stage according to my definition. The most stable stage, okay, so here we are. This is the table. So Hirata is describing the beta stable stage. His conclusions will be different from mine. Well, let's just this. We just want to look at the terminology you're using here. So you're using A, B. So you have already. So a lot of people have used the dihumanoid molecule. So we see you used it. Gert already used the A, B combination. So he's already Gert, you, myself, and Christopher Rada used the dihumanoid molecule. But then.
trihumanoid molecule, you're the first person to use trihumanoid molecule or trimer of human uh, ABA, ABC. Now tetrahumanoid molecule, that's you use tetrahumanoid molecule. That's, no, this is, uh, so Henry Bray did this, but he's, uh, his, his whole ideas are based off of Goethe. So Henry Bray read Goethe and he says that iron uh, SO4, iron sulfate, is akin to a sultan who has four <coughs> wives. And that's, he published this in 1910. And then Christopher Hotta did the same thing. He said that this could be the Eastern, Middle Eastern, Middle Eastern Plegos molecule, symbolized by X, Y, 4. And then, here's Harada right there. Now the hexta, hexa humanoid molecule is a six human molecules bounded. Hepta humanoid molecule seven. Hepta. So nobody's done more than this, these other ones. So that's why you're, 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 you're work, your mind is working and thinking of, is the way things people will see things in the future is what I'm trying to say. Mm -hmm. So let's go back, to, I think we're almost done with this chapter. And, uh, so here's Mirza there at the page. So there we are. So from an historical point of view, when you're talking about the tetrahumanite molecule, there's only maybe four, four people Berta, Bray, myself, and Harada, who have done this. So it's a, there's very small people, only a handful of people think like this. So this equation is very uh, forward thinking. Now, let's see on page one. So, 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 uh, which was that guy, Henry? You, uh, Henry Bray. Henry he is Bray. A, he's kind of a student of Goethe. He, he read uh -huh. Goethe's work and he kind of wrote it. Okay. He's the guy who wrote The Living Universe. Mm -hmm. So he's one of the last people he published the book in 1910. He's the last person who was coherent enough to use the term life, but he applied it all the way down to the chemicals. He's talked about hydrogen is alive, and the universe is alive, the sun is alive, and but it's very interesting reading, but that was kind of the tipping point where you kind of had to, you had to think to yourself, when are you gonna start saying live? This book is interesting. And what do you say about this over here, Mirza? <coughs> We're talking about entropy of mixing, in terms of the social context. Yeah, boy, the guy, the guy is System or if you relate it as the reaction product herein, the energy expenditure or increase in entropy of mixing would be equivalent to the tires required for the expansion of gases from their initial pressure to their partial pressure in their solution. Now, what is your opinion? You have a uh a loose, a loose idea. You could talk about entropy of mixing in social terms. Yeah, this is the, this is a social social system in destruction. In, in what? If a gas is introduced into the system, or if it is created as a reaction product therein, the energy expenditure or increase in entropy or of mixing would be equivalent to delta S required for expansion of the gases from their initial pressure to their partial pressure. You see there, they are being broken into pieces, mm -hmm. right? If the gas is introduced into the system, gas or heat or pressure, but one of those constants is introduced into the system and or if it is created as a reaction product therein, Hydrogen and oxygen is splitting according to hydrogen and oxygen in, in, in the case of water. The, the, the entropy would be mixing, would be increase, would, would increase mm -hmm. because of because the because that is that is not mixing. And what the what that entropy would be equivalent to require for expansion of gases. One from their initial initial pressure to the pressure to the partial pressure of the gas pressure. The, the, the entropy would consist of the expansion of the gases, energy expended in the expansion, okay. and in energy expand, expended in, in the breakup. Okay, so let me ask a question. So suppose that we introduce the Afghan refugees in the, in the Pakistan, and the entropy of mixing increases. Uh, what, so the, uh, 
How to explain? Can you explain that a little? Elaborate a little bit. If you had the Afghan refugees come into Pakistan, and it, it, there's an entropy of mixing. The Afghan, Afghanistan is. Uh, We're not Af the ones from. Uh, seven, seven. They, uh, they came from Africa, refugees, and they had that little, they had that village on the outside of town. Which refugees were those? They're from Africa, the. Uh, to which country? Ethiopian. Uh, to which country? There was a certain. Somebody was telling me that at a certain period there was so many uh, these Ethiopian migrants that came into Pakistan. No, and they no, live no. on the outskirts of town. No, 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 no. no. This, that, that was long time back. That was. Uh, this uh, you're talking about Makran coastal, uh, where where uh, a lot of people from Africa settled in. Mm. That's what you're saying. You're well, that's what, how about you give me an example right here where social gas is introduced into a liquid system. Mm -hmm. Where oh, we have there, there, there could be and we, and we have we have an increase in entropy of mixing. Look, you take the case of Afghanistan itself. About Afghanistan. Okay. Take the example of Afghanistan. Afghanistan is not one unit. Of, it's, it's a heterogeneous society. Mm -hmm. There are people from the north, there are people from one, one province, where, uh, there are several districts, and each one has its own identity, mm -hmm. and each one has its own resources. But the main resource is heroin. The what? Heroin. Heroin, okay. Yeah, okay. So the, the, the that, that keeps most of the people in Gary. But then there is a there is a unit in the, in the northern area. In the northern part, northern area of of, 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 of Awanita, mm -hmm. to which this, this uh, fellow uh, Karzai, he belongs. Mm -hmm. They are more powerful. The Russians had used the Karzai and the anti anti Karzai people to occupy the territory. Mm -hmm. Then came the uh, Americans. Mm -hmm. They introduced another, another force through the Taliban in Pakistan. Mm -hmm. the two, this this, this is, is split the communities apart already. But the Taliban could, uh, could, could introduce order. Mm -hmm. That was not to the liking of anybody. Nobody wanted an Islamic state anyway. Mm -hmm. So some, something had to be done. The Americans came in. They killed, they, they, they got uh, those twin tower people killed and, and invaded Afghanistan. Mm -hmm. because, they, uh, because they found that al Qaeda is coming in, uh, in Afghanistan. Mm -hmm. And all that is doing not of the Taliban, but of, but the doing of the Taliban, of the uh, Al Qaeda. Very complicated. So, so this so is the this is the uh, this is the background. Talk this about is where, where where this it, 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 another guy was introduced. Okay. So the uh, Afghanistan the, the Taliban were introduced by the Americans. Yeah. Taliban Taliban were introduced into the system. Okay, and that increased. And that created several. Uh, that created an increase in entry of mixed. Taliban are not, 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 not to their liking. Mm -hmm. Nobody wants a, uh, 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 an Islamic state anywhere. Okay. And that includes uh, well, so many people, including maybe, Pakistan. Maybe Pakistan is also a very good example for this. Mm -hmm. You know, there are uh, many other groups other than, like, you know, uh, uh, see, there are people who are working for the uh, for, for the betterment of uh, CPAC. Mm -hmm. There are people who are working for the uh, for the cause of Afghanistan. There are people who are working in Pakistan. I'm telling you, there are people who are uh, you know who who have specific interests in Arab countries. <coughs> I'm not naming anyone. Mm -hmm. So. Here, Pakistan, uh, it becomes, you know, a battleground for everyone. And it has been the case for so long now that we had a very destable economy. Everybody has their own reactions. All right, let's take a look at this one here, and then we'll be done with this chapter. So here we've got... 
here you're saying that the uh, in this example here, uh -huh. uh, the uh, the Jewish society would appear could not get the due driving force, which is this, uh, and accept the the pressure of the rulers, whoever they were. This suggests that they were a society with a negative driving force in reaction 6.4. I.e., the value of delta G is positive. That means it's a non-spontaneous reaction. Such a reaction would need an input of network to affect the reaction, or else it would not take place. So this is this is a good example here. This is an example of uh, you say this, this the Jewish society in this reaction was an unnatural reaction. It would have to be you'd have to put in a network of work to make the uh, reaction happen. Just as I was saying, if you have an arranged marriage that's not that normally wouldn't go on its own, but the family pressure yeah. puts in the network to make it go. It's the same example that Merge is doing here. So this is very good. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you are in the same plane. <laughs> yes, sir. Are you done with the chapter now? Yeah, no, you, did, you did not write the uh, example of the Kaliman? Uh, no, entropy, of, entropy of mixing is very complicated. Yeah. You, you're giving an example, but now I need to go home and think. And I also need to do research on entropy of mixing because it's not, uh, it's a very complex topic. You, uh, can, 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 you give, can you explain it in simpler terms? Entropy yeah, of mixing? Uh, when I edit the video, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to add some commentary. Yeah. And hopefully, because it's something that, that even, even advanced uh, people who work on this all the time, they get into disagreements about what it means. Because it's okay. uh, so is it like all right? Okay, I'll listen to your work. Uh, we're gonna have to. Uh, so for now we're at chapter eight. We got the uh, anti bonding. We are doing very fast process. because the concepts are now established and they are in place. <laughs> so you know, yes, sir, we're making lots of time now. Lots of progress. <laughs> Only two more chapters and we're gonna be done. <laughs> when I'm doing French. One of them. Yeah, I'm maybe money below. I'm there to co coordinate, you know. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Where is it? Chai below. Chai below. Chai or pani? Both below. Pani below. So first. Huh? Pani means water. Water. Uh, water yeah. for you. Yeah. Okay. I'll take a five-minute break and then we'll get into this one. No, 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 he's it's bringing water, just you, you oh, okay. go on. All right, let's read this one here. I got, you, you go okay, on. so here now we're in chapter anti-bonding forces. We're going to see what Mirza has to say about social anti-bonding forces and motivation. So we're going to learn something new today, everybody. Near water. Thank you. Okay, so here we have, yeah, we've got this good, means this good, uh, what he's doing here is good logic. The uh, cohesive forces among the components in the solution have been correlated in the previous chapters with the interaction of individuals in the society and it's been shown that Rhodes' law and Henry's law, the law of uh, partial pressures of dilute solutions, and Le Chandelier's and the Gutenberg and Wage law of mass action uh, apply and chemical equ equilibria are all applicable with human behavior. So here's a good, this is a good logic. If Physical principles such as the ones just mentioned can be related to certain aspects of human behavior. It should be possible to propose a mechanism of interaction among the human reactants, and then try to interpret in light of the interpret this in light of the hypothesis being developed here. So here, uh, social mechanisms are um, something that's uh, very. Uh, we see a lot of mechanisms in organic chemistry, or this goes this way and this this changes this bond and we see all the steps and we can break down the steps for uh, this uh, this element moves over here and these two bonds form and we can see step by step so in the future what we're going to have once we get to the science of physical chemical sociology developed and established in all the universities in the world then we will have people doing research on social uh, physical chemical social uh, mechanisms of interaction so here we see a statement that once we it's proposed and done, we're going to have a, a good future subject here. This is the basic premise of the uh, of the book, mm -hmm. and this is where this is where the new dimension opens up. New dimension. Yeah. We, we are not claiming 
that anti-bonding forces are not there. Mm -hmm. We have to recognize that the bonding as well as anti-bonding forces have come together. Mm -hmm. They are part of the system. So if you think uh, 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 all the anti-bonding forces will be destroyed, no, it is not possible. And that is why there will always be departure from ideality. An ideal solution does not exist. An ideal gas does not exist. An ideal society should not exist. Mm -hmm. uh, well, well, I don't know what what, ideals... Whatever means you adopt, you, you, ultimately you will have to bomb with, with so many uh, Hiroshima bombs <laughs> to, to, to get to something. Okay. But that will annihilate. It will, it will only annihilate. It will not eliminate. I don't know if I understand you, but I follow you on the part about the bombing. But uh, the ideal solution just means that uh, ideal gas and ideal solution just means that uh, ideal gas would be the case if there was no interaction of the particles, then you would have the ideal gas less fit. But once you start getting uh, high pressures or high temperatures, then you get deviation. And ideal solution is similar to that. But the jump from ideal society to that is, is not, I don't think that's a good connection because you're. Uh, uh, well, I guess we, because the uh, we have, uh, uh, I get, the idea that you're trying to say ideal gas and ideal society is like a utopia. I, the, the, that's not exactly a good connection because ideal uh, gas just means we have a simple model. But if we have, once we get our models closer to the social system, they're just a matter of. Uh, you see, the, the, the best example is some, some of those uh, uh, Greek uh, dynasty, Greek, Greek democracies of the ancient past. Yeah. Then, then, the, then there is a glimpse of that society in in Medina. Mm -hmm. I, uh, professor, mm -hmm. but only for a brief period. Only for a brief period. As soon as he was, he, 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 he met his uh, death. Uh, the, the, the society, the Qatarian was an ideal society. Uh, I don't know. I don't know if you're correct about this. You're just you're getting the word you're getting the word ideal confused with the idea that you're saying in, at the time of the formation of Medina, everybody had the same interaction, just like in our gas phase, just all the gas period. particles. Just for a brief period. But the, the, the original. But then it split apart after his death. Yeah, at I mean, the moment of his death. I'm going to show you the history it is of it. Split apart at the moment of his death. Yeah. yeah, I think you're getting you're you're confusing terminology with the the mechanisms. So I'm going to show you the origin, the history of the ideal gas law, just so we can we can because you spend I know you spend a lot of time on this book about trying to make, compare the ideal society of the, the Muhammad uh, with the ideal solution models, but I think you're getting the terminology mixed up. <laughs> that is the beauty of the book. <laughs> I don't know. The terminology is very important when it comes to thermodynamics. As uh, uh, Dr. Siddiqui and uh, Mumtaz said in the beginning, if, that, if their lecture could produce slight amount of different uh, disturbance in my mind, <laughs> then is how it be done. So if, if, if this book has disturbed you in, in a certain way, disturbed your mind in a certain way, I think you did. I have been successful in putting final. Yeah, you, you have disturbed my mind very much. But I just, if I come to something that's incorrect, I just have to point it out you, to everybody who's watching and also just to give you a different, you know, some uh, third party perspective on what your, your theories are doing here. So here's the ideal gas law. Uh, and uh, so maybe they could do an here's the ideal gas law. The P, the uh, pressure times the volume in a gas system is equal to the amount of substances times the ideal gas constant times the temperature of the system. So this uh, ideal gas law holds, and it was actually uh, started from the the first one was. Boyle's law here. Let's 
of the uh, medical engine. So the ideal gas flow comes from this device. So all of your, when you want to, this is called the pneumatical engine. And the, the, the Boyle's law of press, pressure is inversely proportional to uh, volume. It comes from this. So when you're speaking about the ideal solution, you, you want to make sure that you have your, your mind straight with what you're talking about in the ideal society, because this is where the ideal gas flow comes from. So this, is, this was invented. Uh, uh, actually, it was the, the device was invented by Otto von Buer before uh, he wrote this. Uh, he, invent, he developed the. Uh, he wanted to disprove that you could make a vacuum in a space because Aristotle said that uh, you couldn't make a vacuum. And vacuums were impossible. And this Aristotle's had been in it, held sway with all philosophers up until uh, 1650, and then they started to question this whole thing: Is it really true that vacuums don't exist? The vacuum is being just a space that's devoid of any kind of atoms. So uh, this Otto von Guric started making these uh, these reverse air pumps, and he connected to these glass balls like right this. And he figured out he could pump out the uh, air molecules, and uh, then when he hooked the, he found out he could make a vacuum inside of this. So, anyways, this news of this Otto von Guric's work started spreading around Europe, and within uh, five years. Robert Boyle got a hold of one of these devices and had uh, Robert Hooke make a, uh, a pneumatical engine. He started doing measurements by measuring the pressure and the volume using this device here where you can crank it like this. Uh, you can decrease the volume. Like if you, crank, if you crank right here, this goes up and you decrease the volume. And then you can also measure the pressure at the top, how much pressure is there. So he found that the pressure, if you if you decrease the volume, the pressure goes up. And if you increase the volume, the pressure goes down. So in this, so what he found is that P is inversely proportional volume. And that this holds under uh, what we call uh, ideal, uh, ideal uh, system, which means that it's not too much pressure, not too much volume. So in this case, we, we assume that the molecules are just Picking around inside the container, and they're not really having interactions to them. But if you start putting a lot of pressure down there, you can make the molecules click together and form bonds, and then you have a non-ideal system. And they, uh, uh, then you have uh, the Boyle's law doesn't hold anymore. And that's so all of the gas laws. They started making more and more gas laws to the point where it got to be that pressure times the volume PV equals nRT. So you've got five. Pressure, volume, times the number of particles in the system, uh, times the ideal gas constant equals the temperature. So you've got three, four variables: pressure, volume, temperature, and concentration. But so there's actually a language. I'm trying to find there's a language thing in there where they switched. Uh, ideal. So here's Boyle's law right here. He says that the pressure and the expanses are reciprocal and in proportion. And then, Oh, it's gas loss, that's good. I gotta figure it out. Here we go. 